Hi, this is John Burry. I'm the Principal Consultant with uh, Pivot Point Security, and one of the areas that I work in extensively is Security Information Event Management. Uh, this particular presentation was originally given at a CSO Breakfast Club meeting in Baltimore in the fall. Uh, it was given again in early 2009 at a CIO, CIO conference out in uh, Chicago. A number of the folks asked us if we'd put it online. Uh, so they'd have an opportunity to review when they needed to. So here goes. Uh, prevailing wisdom is that uh, you can only have a, a web video that's about 10 minutes long. Uh, so I'll probably talk pretty quick here. Uh, we've also uh, shortened the version uh, of the pres original presentation. Uh, the original is available on our website if that would be helpful to you. You know, I, you know, I don't have the time, I guess, here to bore you with uh, how wonderful and experienced we are in this particular area. Uh, we have, suffice to say, that we've been doing SIM for about seven years. Uh, we've worked uh, extensively in different industries with different types of SIM products. Uh, we've even developed custom SIM projects and custom SIM uh, implementations for particular clients' implementations as well. So with no further ado, let's talk about the five common attributes that we see to uh, you know, what I refer to as successful SIM projects. Those are projects that largely achieve uh, the, the objectives of the organization. Um, I guess it's uh, uh, perhaps self-evident that we might say that a requirements definition is the single most critical phase. Um, but as in anything, it's not, um, it's not knowing what to do, it's actually going about and doing it. And what we find with it in the SIM space specifically is that because this phase is a very, very painful phase that uh, people don't often commit the resources and time necessary. Uh, if you're in charge of a SIM project, uh, you know, one of the easiest ways to do a good job is to continually act four years old. Um, you know, why, why, why? Fortunately, my kids have passed that. Um, another great way to do this is to begin with the end in mind. Uh, in the past, when I used to develop uh, database-based applications, one of the ways that I went about that design was I would always start from the end, and I would ask clients, okay, what type of reports do we need? Uh, you know, what are we going to need? I think you can do the same thing here. Uh, you know, why do we have the system as an example? What type of audit evidence will I need to produce? You know, what type of reports are the auditors going to ask for? By knowing that, uh, you know, as an example, if it's PCI relevant, we know which systems are PCI relevant. We know what types of events, you know, particularly administrative logons, which might be important. Uh, what content we need to make sure is actually inside of each event packet. Um, you know, how we need to normalize the data. Uh, how long our correlation rules are going to need. Uh, what type of incident response we're going to require. Uh, you know, what our re retention requirements are for the particular data. Uh, it, again, if it's something that's subject to uh, evidentiary requirements, what they may be as well. You know, as an order, I can tell you that, you know, insufficient requirements definition, not only for SIM projects, but for projects as a whole, tend to be the root cause of virtually every failure. Um, the single most important requirement that you can come up with from a SIM perspective is uh, events per second. Uh, that's EPS. And the reason is, is that uh, all of the downstream architecture is very highly reliant on events per second. Uh, you know, we need to, to understand how we're going to right size a correlation engine. We need to understand how many events per second we're going to have and what's the longest, how many events per second will actually be going through that particular engine and what is the longest temporal resolution for a correlation rule, as an example. So uh, another critical thing when you look at events per second is to make sure that you factor in an appropriate growth factor over time and also at least 40% of headroom so that if you have a significant security incident, as an example, a worm outbreak, uh, that you're going to have enough cap room to be able to handle that. If you end up in a situation where uh, people are coming forward to you with a project um, and you look down and you don't believe that they've done a sufficient job of developing the requirements, you know, my experience would say bail uh, rather than move forward. The, the great thing about uh, good requirements is that they're going to make uh, you know, SIM best practice too a lot easier in that uh, requirements drive your system architecture. Um, some of the things that we see that people don't fully consider when they're going through this process is you know, understanding what the communications architecture can be. As an example, an IDS or IPS solution may have three or four different ways it can actually talk to a SIM. It can syslog the data. It may have a back-end database that you can ODBC connect with. Uh, you may be able to make a TCP IP based connection and run across an SSH socket. Uh, and there'll be pros and cons of each approach, uh, depending upon your architecture, depending on the system. And it's important that you kind of think all those things through. Um, do remember correlation is very resource consumptive. So what you really want to do to the extent possible is minimize your events per second through the correlation engine. In other words, only essential sources, only um, particular types of events that are going to be relevant to achieve your objectives are actually going through the correlation engine. 
Um, so the other thing which is we see as a, as a challenge is that um, we get the SIM up and standing and what we find is that we haven't yet operationalized it. Uh, SIMs in and of themselves are part of your infrastructure and they need to actually be monitored themselves. It's not uncommon for a connector or a collector to stop connecting or a device to stop sending data. If they're an integral part of your environment, it's important that you're actually monitoring that. Uh, you're also going to have to integrate the SIM with other portions of your environment. Uh, we may be using your asset database or CMDB to actually get uh, relevant contextualized information. Uh, we may be using your existing ticketing system so that we can, um, so that we can uh, integrate with your existing workflows. The other thing is your SIMs need to be compliant with your existing policies. You know, how do we handle disaster recovery? How do we handle segregation of duty? Uh, is the data that's going to the SIM classified and what specific requirements are there to actually deal with that? And then lastly, SIMs often need their own policy standards and procedures. Uh, you know, we have an event, it's significant, what now? What do we do? You know, SIMs are really nothing more than a thin application sitting on, fa on top of a very big database. Uh, so it, it's really important that we understand that and you do due diligence in terms of architecting the database. Uh, even if you've got the best ABAs, one of the challenges are they haven't often worked with an application like this. Uh, that is that there's an extremely high inbound transaction per minute. Not, in other words, continually there are events being inserted in incredibly high rates, three, four, five hundred million per day. But at the same time, we're actually trying to run queries and trying to reports against the same data. And that's going to drive some interesting uh, architectural decisions with regards to how do we index. Uh, because, you know, indexes are necessary to make sure queries and reports run effectively and efficiently, but they impact uh, in slow down insertion rate and they generally add to the amount of data that we're keeping around from a storage perspective. Uh, partitioning is a wonderful tool to improve insertion rates, but it's a challenge from an administration overhead. And then data segregation, uh, in some instances, SAN can help with this, uh, but if you're writing to straight arrays, being able to stripe the data across as many different spindles as possible is critical to ensuring the performance of a SIM. You know, SIMs are a lot like uh, IDS solutions, and that is that they need to be uh, provided with appropriate resources on a go-forward basis to remain valuable. Uh, why? Because your environment changes. Uh, you know, every time that you push a change to a, uh, as an example, Cisco IOS, you know, perhaps there's new events which need to be accounted for that we need to adjust the collector and connector for. Uh, perhaps the, it breaks the parsing of a particular type of event type that needs to be changed. Uh, any changes in policies, laws, and regulation as, you know, payment card industry comes out with DSS V2 or V3, uh, that's going to change really what we're going to be doing from a SIM perspective. Even network changes, uh, changes to the architecture, changes to VLAN may disrupt communications. Uh, it may change uh, FQDNs, which are integral to, let's say, correlation rules and things of that nature. To give you a sense, uh, we baselined a particular client that we operate their SIM on a fully outsourced perspective. Uh, and over an 18-month period, uh, it took up an average of about 96 hours per month to operate their SIM. And you can see we've given you a breakdown on what the different skill sets were and what percentage of the effort was those. An important thing when you look across those skill sets, SIMs require uh, diverse skill sets, you know, DBA, uh, CIS, SP, audit types of skill sets, uh, people skilled with uh, database SQL and things of that nature. So also make sure that you commit not only the quantity of resources, but the quality and diversity of resources that are necessary. Lastly, um, beware ending up in a log consolidation project. And what I mean by that is in the early days when we did SIM projects, they tended to be, okay, well, we're going to uh, gather uh, information from these 150 devices in these 10 different classes, and we would literally um, go through, pick a class, gather the data, get it into the database, move to the next class, and iterate until we were done. The challenge is you tended not to ever get done because you would continually end up improving uh, you know, earlier stages because people come forward and say, hey, we're not getting all the data perfectly. And then also you would learn more about normalization and taxonomization and correlation. And we would end up constantly in a non-ending uh, log consolidation improvement project. So what we do now is we tend to go very pain point specific. So as an example, let's use PCI. Let's talk about um, uh, administrative access to uh, PANs, payment account numbers. Uh, so, you know, in that case, what we would do is say, okay, well, this is what we're going to start with. Uh, there are only three databases in your environment that are, are PCI relevant. Uh, let's get the logs from those. Let's get only the particular events that are critical to make sure that we get for this particular requirement. Uh, let's figure out how that data needs to be normalized, taxonomized. Do we need any specific correlation rules? Let's generate the reports. Are there any incident workflows which need to be done? Okay, at that point, we've got a quick win. Uh, we've gained momentum internally. Uh, we've also gained political support. And then what we can also do is that as we then iterate through future pain points, 
Uh, we stay focused. We continually um, con continually execute quick wins. And really what happens is that you, we learn something each time so that each future phase gets a little bit easier and is a little bit better. Try to be fast. Uh, I'll wrap up equally fast. If you'd like a copy of the original full-length presentation or any other inf additional information, uh, you can get to us at our website. Uh, you can send me an email or please feel free to give us a call. Thank you.